Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions <laughs> with your host Brian. Uh, we're going to wrap up this week with a new track from a new band, a young band. Uh, they've only been around for a couple of years, releasing their debut EP in 2019. They have a brand new single out right now called Wake Up. The band is called Frog with two G's. They're described as a modern experimental technical metal band uh, who have a simple concept behind them, show off some originality in an often overprocessed genre, that being modern heavy music. Um, some interesting things I read about them is that uh, this track itself is a melange of styles. The guitar solo section is riddled with authentic Afro-Cuban instrumentation, which separates the front and back of the song structure, opening up the repeating verse and pop-punk-styled chorus for a more dynamic interpretation. Yeah. Okay, so we got technical metal. We have exploration of world sounds. I... I'm stoked. I don't need to read any more. We need to get into this. The track we're looking at is Wake Up from Frog. I love the black keys on the keyboard. That just looks really sharp. Oh, dang, it's getting right in on the shred. Yeah, so what is that, uh, 15, That bass is funky. The keyboard and dual guitar section is so good. The second vocalist, Tom. All right, I'm good. Digging that melodic drumming back there.
it's really interesting listening to the uh, the production on the clean vocals just after hearing the production on the harsh vocals. There's a very different approach taken to both of them and it creates an interesting juxtaposition in the vocal deliveries. Uh, tuplet feel. Was that the melody to uh, Frere Jaca? That is a lot. Well, that's embarrassing. I've showcased I don't know how to drink on screen. <laughs> okay, so there is a lot going on in here. This is... Let's go instrument by instrument, because we're not going to be able to go section by section. It's starting to annoy me. We're going to start with what I think was my favorite instrument on here, and this is no shade to anyone else, just, you know, personal biases plus fantastic playing on it. The bass guitar was sick. The tone is gnarly, but light enough. For some of the lighter sections to not be overpowering i don't remember hearing a tone shift so i think it's just a very versatile guitar tone that they dialed in um the bass work was fantastic moving lines all over the place really sick double tapping multi-finger tapping i think even at one part uh the bassist is clearly skilled has a great ear for their specific tone um, and just knows how to always do something of interest even when they're providing something foundational to the track and not a lead melody line. Anytime that I tuned in to what the bassist was doing, I was, I was happy. It was always a good time. Um, the drummer, really, I mean just the rhythm section as a whole. The bass and drum are phenomenal in here. Uh, the drummer has a really great sense of rhythmic drumming that we unfortunately only got to only got to hear once. It was during one of the guitar led sections, uh, and they kept up with the same rhythmic pattern as the guitarist, but doing their own thing on the kit. I'd love to hear more of that. Uh, the fills in here are just disgustingly precise, though. There is a raw precision at play. Uh, I don't know. It's just good. It's just good. The fills are fast, uh, equal distant. There's a there's a robotic inhumanity to the performance. Um, 
but it's not always technically impressive. The drummer knows when to rein it in, just like the bassist knows how to play some foundational lines in order to serve what the song needs at any moment. The drummer also knows when to rein it in a bit uh, and get rid of some of the flourish in order to make room for someone else to provide that extra pizzazz to the track. And it just showcases uh, both... Uh, immense skill from both of these players and a maturation of composition skill uh, and knowing what the song needs at any one point and not and, and kind of going against the ego and allowing themselves to play something a bit simpler because that's what the song requires for the moment. It really is a balancing act for uh, technical bands like this to find that midpoint and I think that at least for these two instruments it it was perfectly balanced. The guitar work in here is phenomenal. Uh, the shred, the tapping, uh, the speed, the harmonic complexity, everything was just done very well. Uh, I have, I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear, but now I don't have complaints about anybody. <laughs> as far as musicianship and skill and performance go, everybody knocked it out of the park here. Um, you know, we can push this over to the, the, the keyboardist. Fantastic lines. Uh, I love the way that it worked alongside the guitar, sometimes providing harmony, sometimes, sometimes providing counterpoint, um, sometimes just being environmental, uh, not environmental, uh, ambient, uh, atmospheric sounds on the outside of the song. Um, just again, knowing when to show off and when to play a bit more reserved. Uh, and the vocal work is interesting here. Uh, the harshes are brutal and punchy. The cleans are ethereal and such a strong contrast to the harshes. I think both vocalists do harshes, but they're similar timbres enough that I got them mixed up at times. So uh, visually, though, I saw two people screaming during harsh sections so I, I do think both vocalists are doing harshes which is cool um maybe it's in other tracks i think the only thing i would really want out of that is for the male vocalist to provide some cleans as well um, in order to create harmonized cleans just like you all do the harmonized and stacked harshes just having that extra tool in your toolbox is a phenomenal Thing for creating the diversity and contrast that you so obviously are great at <laughs> uh, and having more tools in your tool in your toolbox is never a bad idea and being able to pull out some uh, harmonized cleans I think that'd be pretty cool like I said I don't know if that's on other tracks I don't know if that's something in the male vocalist skill set at all uh, you know when it comes to vocalists you can never know Right? Sometimes you hear a beautiful voice and then they also have like the gnarliest guttural and you're like, wow. Uh, then sometimes you hear people scream and then they have the most beautiful angelic voices. And then sometimes they just hyper focus in on one and do it very well. You know, you never really know what's in someone's repertoire. So I'm not sitting here saying that I know exactly the, the male vocalist can't do it and he needs to learn how. Um, but it is something I'd like to hear if it's possible in future tracks regardless of where the current skill set is because I don't know what it is because um, I think it would be pretty awesome just another layer of, of contrast you can add in here speaking of we've kind of run down a general list of the instruments the music is just bonkers all over the place and it is it feels so very 2020s <laughs> Uh, I, I, I'll be honest, I had difficulty keeping up with it. This is incredibly dense on each section and incredibly dense overall. Y'all packed a ton of song into six and a half minutes. Um, and I was quite a bit overwhelmed with it, but what I think I can comment on is the exceptional ability to hone in on all of these different sounds, not just individually, and the fact that you can reproduce all this variety of sonic textures and composition styles, which showcases a ton of compositional chops, but also your ability to blend them in ways that seem effortless in an almost why haven't they done this before kind of vibe, not they, the band, but like just music in general. 
Um, having these pop punk style vocals with a bit of a gazy production on them, a bit ethereal on top of thrashy metalcore. I mean, that just sounds really good. And like, why hasn't anyone else thought of this? That kind of deal. Uh, there's a lot of mashups in here that showcase a, a wide variety of your influences and uh, tastes and what you enjoy in music being smashed together in ways I've never heard before, but end up working quite well. And, you know, I just, I have to give, I have to give props for that. It is not easy to mash up disparate ideas into something cohesive and y'all did it not once, but multiple times on this track. Um... I think the only other thing I have to say would be a slight criticism, which is going to be totally subjective, but the song just doesn't feel cohesive to me. It is a lot of a lot, and to my ears, it sounds like seven different ideas just smashed together uh, back to back, and you just have to roll with it. And I know that Basically, the, the, the musical version of a smash cut is very popular in metal. I get schooled on this in the comments. It is just not my favorite cup of tea, especially with such wild shifts in musicality. Um, and this track is kind of a lot of that. It's like channel surfing. You know, the audio cuts out for a second. It loads the next channel. Then you get something completely different coming in. And that's what this feels like, just a constant flurry of that. Even that final guitar solo that brought in the uh, the clave rhythm. Uh, we were in the middle of the solo, and then just everything stopped for a second. The guitars kept going, and then there was like this cut, where it's like one minute we have this metal backing track, and the next minute we have this uh, Afro-Cuban sound uh, with the hand drums and uh, the clave rhythm. And it just kind of comes out of nowhere. I don't know that it particularly augmented the solo at all. And then we just had a beat of silence before coming into, uh, I think, our final chorus or the, the pre-chorus for our final chorus there at the end. Moving, just shifting gears completely, going back to the metalcore stuff. So it's it's fine. You know, if, if Frog, if you're watching this, don't take this as criticism. You really need to take to heart. But it, it was a really big hurdle for me in understanding and enjoying myself here. But all, all the other technicalities to the performance and the composition and the way things get smashed up, I will be digging into your uh, 2019 EP and looking into or... I guess not looking into it. I got to find your release date so I can put it on my calendar. Because uh, I got to check this out when it comes out. I, I'm immensely interested in this band. They remind me of uh, a more fun arch spire. With clean vocals, which is like one of my big... I love clean vocals with just heavy gnarly metal. It just works so well. And uh, the fact that you all have clean and harshes in here and have a bit more of a fun, brighter sound to the technicality. There's a lot in here I love. And I think that the uh, the types of transitions that are used in here, even if they're used in a lot of other tracks, is a hurdle I'm willing to get over to enjoy the things that I do like in this band. All right, I'm going to hit the lyrics real quick. I, I almost ended the video. we got to hit some lyrics, see what, see what we're talking about here. It's called Wake Up, and uh, then we'll wrap this up. All right, so lyrically, this is The Matrix. This is Get Woke. This is you're sleepwalking through life and missing out on the realities that those in power want you to be ignorant and sleepwalking and you need to open your eyes and wake up and realize the truth of the situation the opening says trapped in this delusion i'm so numb the momentum is corrupted break apart the system till there's only one to blame the chorus says you won't find what you're looking for if you're only willing to ignore so don't keep quiet they like you silent ignorant and unaware it's easy if you don't care you're still sleeping, you're still dreaming, 
wake up. The second verse, second half of the track, leans into uh, the process of the narrator having their own moment of waking up. It says, uh, no longer a captive, I can see it all. The process has reverted, forging shattered walkways, so there's only one way to find out. Um, and that's pretty much all of the lyrics. There's a, there's a pre-chorus in here and there's a couple of mid lines that kind of take place in odd parts of the structure. It's, it's like super linear aside from the repetition of the chorus. So, um, but that's, I mean, that's pretty much the, the big thing there. You know, here's one stanza that I didn't bring up. Your eyes are open, yet you're still blind. Your soul awakens, but where the guides, they lie. I mean, it just, it ties into a lot of the things are explained and explored in the chorus. Um, and that's what it's about. It's like, hey, things aren't great. Those in power want you to not notice them. And you're doing a pretty good job of just sleepwalking through life and not noticing things. So wake up. And notice all of the ways that the world is falling apart so we can fight back against those who are secretly in power. That whole deal. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know many ways that lyrically this ties into the music other than it's loud and hopefully that wakes people up. It's also a sort of an anthem. The chorus, especially having the punk pop the pop punk rhythm in the vocals can kind of can come off kind of anthemy. Uh, it is supposed to be a song about telling people to wake up. So the loudness, the ferocity, the technicality, it's something that's very difficult to ignore. And I think it kind of ties into the lyrics a little bit in that way. But otherwise, I wouldn't really say there's anything in the music, uh, especially quarterly, that leans into any of the concepts in the lyrics. But that is fine. I mean, a lot of metal. Is that especially technical metal where the music has to be technically proficient? I feel like the music comes first and the lyrics come later in those situations. Now, that's not how it has to be done, but that's how I would do it because that's what makes sense to me. Anyways, those are my thoughts on Wake Up by Frog. Let me know your thoughts, opinions, perspectives all down in the comment section. Let me know what's going on. If you enjoyed this, if you're going to check out more of them like I am, any of that. Above that in the description box you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you to this menu. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that if you could like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today but we will be back tomorrow. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. We're going to check out an entire album going track by track, uh, doing reactions and analyses just like this but for all of the tracks and then seeing how it all fits together as a whole work of art. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.